Hi, my name is Corina Graham, and this is my audition video for Redkin Artist. When I think of Redkin, I think of family. I think support, I think dedication, um, education, and most importantly, I think home. There's no brand that I would rather support or be a part of than Redkin. So becoming a Redkin artist is absolutely a dream, and it's something that I can't wait to start the journey for. Today I'd like to share with you a diagonal foiling placement that's maximizing the lightness potential we have with minimal effort of putting in foils. So we'll use about 15 foils total in order to get the, get the job done. However, this technique can be used throughout the entire head. It's not specific to one area. It can be used with demi-permanent color. It can be used with permanent hair color. It can be used with lighteners. It can be used with high lift hair color. It can be also utilized as a balayaging technique. Today I'm going to be utilizing it in foils. I'm also going to be using flash lift with 20 volume peroxide developer. And then we will be glazing it in the end. So Erica has already been pre-treated for us. I pre-treated her with pre-art and hair cleansing cream to just go ahead and remove any impurity to help equalize porosity and overall to give us a good blank canvas. So we have a great working environment for us today. So I've also, since then, she determined that her part is right here on the side, just about the middle with her eyebrow, her eyeball. So I went ahead and stuck with that part and I've utilized it to where I have a little bit more on the heavier side of her part. I've had an inch and a half on this side, where on the left side I have about an inch. And I've put that into one section and it goes all the way back to, let me just move her head really quick, sorry. It goes all the way back to the back part of her head, right? So I've utilized that, put that into a, in a parting for me. With the rest of her hair that was down, all I did was just secured it out of my way. That way I didn't have to fight with it. It's just back here in a little clip like that. We're going to be just working in this parting for today, but like I said earlier, you can use this technique anywhere in the head, however you see fit to section it, but just to get the purpose of it, we're going to just stick with this one today. So I've got flash lift and 20 volume mixed over here. I have my foils, I have everything I need, including a blur brush, just in case I wanted to utilize that to my advantage. Because she parts her hair, where I said that right there is her parting, because she parts her hair there, what I'm already noticing is that according to my parting, this is on a diagonal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my very first foil right at that hairline. So I'm gonna take a slice, which should be no like thicker than a quarter of an inch. We don't, I should be able to read through this. We can see through it. If I was to put my cell phone up to it, you could read text message through it. If it were too thick, we wouldn't be able to get the product through to fully saturate what needs to be saturated. So I'm gonna take my first foil and I'm gonna start in the front. I'm gonna lay it in. What I am going to do is start about an inch and a half into the hairline. So I'm not gonna start all the way up at the front. I'm gonna start an inch and a half back. And then we're gonna blur that line and blend it forward so that it's a little bit softer towards the front of her face. So here's my blur brush. I'm going to pick this up and I'm just going to soften out that line just enough. If you can see that color just sort of melting into that zone one there. If you're not familiar with Redkin's terminology, that's okay. Zone one is what we refer to as the first half an inch, one and a half inches from the scalp. And then we have zone two, which goes to about the shoulder. So what we would consider the porous ends would be zone three. So if you're not familiar with that language, that's okay. What we're doing is um, we're staying off of the roots. We're starting in the mid strands and we're pulling it all the way through to those ends. But as you can see, we have a heavier saturation of hair color and it just softens all the way up to that zone one. We're gonna fold our foil. 
locking it into place. Now the locking it into place is just going to make sure that we don't have any slipping, any bleeding. Um, we don't want any of that to inhibit on our beautiful foiling application. Now I'm working with an Erica today, so I am just going to let that foil just hang right there in her face, okay? We pick back up my next section. From where this line was, I'm now going to take a diagonal parting through that crossing over the center to the corner of my last foil. I'm going to drop her head down so we can see. There's my next parting. Pick her head back up. My stitch is still going to be a slice. Again, quarter of an inch thick, we should be able to read through it. Pick up my lightener. I'm going to start an inch and a half, half an inch to an inch away from that zone one. And then I'm going to paint it all the way through to that zone three. I'm going to pick up my blur brush. I'm going to blend or soften that line closer to her zone one. Fold my foil. Lock it into place so that when we move them around, there's no bleeding. Now, I've created my first two foils that overlap each other like that. Perfect. The only thing different I'm going to do is now these two are my reference points. I'm going to come back into where I first started. I'm going to take one more back to back slice and I'm just going to mimic that same part line one more time. The reason that I'm doing that is because she told me she likes it a little bit lighter right where she parts her hair right in the front of her face. So I'm just going to do just how she asked and make it a little bit brighter right there. Blair brush. Soften that line. Lock in my foil. So I should have two foils mimicking the same parting. My next foil it's going to go diagonally to the corner of that, which is mimicking that one. My next parting, you can see that diagonal foil here. My next parting is going to come through that corner on that diagonal. So I'll show you what that looks like. Now this is my parting to this parting that was right in front of it. Lifting it right back up. Still a slice, so a quarter of an inch in thickness. She just needed a little love tap there. The reason I'm choosing diagonal foiling placement is no other reason than it creates nice, soft movement in the design for us. Horizontal lines tend to create weight. Vertical lines can give us the illusion of length. And a diagonal line kind of softens the mold between the two. So for us, in order to really get nice, subtle movement here without it being overpowering or too um, stripy looking, a diagonal foil placement is a really nice way to go. Just so you start to see the look of it now, there's that foil right on top. Pick it back up. Here's my section. This was my last diagonal. Now I need to turn my comb so that X marks that spot. All right, here's my line right here. So easy, what I'm gonna do is just slide my comb. Don't even pick it up off the head, slide it right back in, and I should hit the center of that foil. Just to double check, lay that down, lay your comb right on it. If you're right in the center of that, then you're right where you should be. Take my quarter of an inch parting. Lift her back up so I can finish what I'm doing. I'm 
one and a half, half an inch to one inch from zone one. That gives us that soft, subtle, easy to like grow back out, um, sort of semi lived in look, which is so trendy right now, we know. Blur brush. What I like to do, if sometimes my blur brush picks up a little bit of like that excess product I don't want, I just always have a towel there and I dab it on the towel to get rid of it. So we take a look. See how those foils are coming along? Perfect. Our next section should be diagonal from where our last foil was. Here's this foil placement. Now I need to take through the center of this one, which would be coming back at us this way. And X would mark that spot. One thing I notice um, with flash lift is that a little bit really spreads easily. I've also mixed the ratio was two scoops of flash lift and I used two ounces of 20 volume peroxide developer with that. My saturation isn't spilling out of the sides. My saturation is just right on point with where I need it to be. There's nothing going to seep out of the corners by folding these in. Um, Flash lift does not utilize heat, so there's no reason necessary for me to put it under a dryer or anything that might inhibit a little bit more swelling. Next foil. There's this one that goes to the center of that foil. So now I have to change my diagonal to the center of this foil, and that would cross right this path. That would be my parting there. Now you can choose any stitch that you desire. It does not have to be a slice. I just chose a slice because I feel like it's the easiest for us to be able to see exactly how the placement should go for today. You can utilize this with a slice skip slice. You can utilize it with a micro stitch, a baby light. You can highlight and low light using this technique. My hot tip for you, if you choose to do a high and a low light technique, would be to make sure that every two have the same color. So if this were to be my highlight, my next foil would also be a highlight, and then I would switch to my low light, and then I would do two low lights, and then back to two highlights. If you don't, the world will not end. However, you may end up with lightness on one side and a little bit darker shade on the other side. So really just utilizing that, your specific pattern there. Now, we're running out of the ability for us to really make any more diagonals with this little section I have left. So what I like to do the most is right down the center of this these two foils where they overlap, go ahead, split that in half, and I will put one foil right down the center of those. So this will be one vertical foil on top of our diagonal foils. The, ver the vertical foil will just help us secure it to close the gap there.
So we'll get this out of Miss Erica's way. All we're going to have to do are fold our foils back. We've secured them in, so there's no way they're going to bleed, slip out, do anything like that for us. And we'll take a look at them. I am going to just stick this clip on it so it doesn't get in her face. We'll take a look at them once they're laying back, and you can truly see that zippered pattern moving all the way down. So what I prefer to do, if you were going to do this technique down the sides, it's totally acceptable. You would turn and section behind the ear, so that section would still be right out of the way. You would just do a vertical parting right down behind the ear, and then you would start if you wanted a diagonal back first or a diagonal forward first. So let's start with a diagonal forward. A diagonal forward foil is going to go in the direction from the crown towards the chin, in this direction. So we would take our comb and slide it in. Allow us to just clip that out of the way. If we chose still to utilize our slice stitch, we place our foil inch and a half or half an inch to one inch from that zone one. Take our blur brush and just soften that edge a little bit. <clears throat> Lock in that foil, fold it right out of our way. Now our next foil, in order to oppose that diagonal, we have to come in the opposite direction. So if this was a diagonal forward, this one would need to change to a diagonal back. So if we use the center of this foil, go towards that hairline, now we've changed our angle to a diagonal back. So now it will come right to the center of that last foil. We're gonna take our slice, Just that bit down. Use our blur brush to soften that edge a little bit. The benefit of a blur brush over just using your regular brush vertical is that the fibers in that, the bristles that are used, are really going to soften it and spread it out a little bit less versus just moving the product around um, that a regular brush could do for us. So we have these two foils overlapping one another. So if our last foil was that diagonal back, now we'd have to switch it again to a diagonal forward which is going to go to the center of that last foil. I'm just going to take these ends that are kind of
spinning around here. I'm just going to lightly like fold them into my, my color and then just continue painting down rather than like swirling them up. Uh, no spaghetti swirls or anything like that. That way we maintain the integrity and everything will be great. Then we have that last foil connecting that there. So your last foil could be, that could be it, or you could keep going. And then you would repeat the same thing on the opposite side. Again, just mimicking whichever one you started with. In our case, we started with a diagonal forward. So we would begin again with another diagonal forward on this side, and then alternating it with a diagonal back, diagonal forward, diagonal back. So just to recap what we did, a diagonal forward foil is going to go in the direction from the crown towards the chin. So it's going to go in this direction. A diagonal back is going to go from the forehead towards the nape in this direction. So if we were to put a marble here, it would roll all the way off onto the floor behind us. And if we were to put a marble here, it would roll on the, up for, on the floor towards us in front of us. We followed the same principles, we just used it on the top of the head. So the first two foils that we would put in were diagonal foils. They were back to back, I with no subsection left out in between, so that we can maximize the lightness potential right in the front of her face where she parts it to. D right behind that, from the center of that foil, we started another diagonal foil that went back. Then we crossed over that path, and we did a di another diagonal foil that went over the top of that. And we just kept crossing on top of each other all the way down that center, that mohawk part where she parted her hair, into the very last foil we closed the gap with a vertical foil. Now, this technique, I said, is great if it, you're utilizing it with a balayage too. It, instead of wrapping them up in a foil, you would create the same thing just with your surface paint, um, your saturation, however it was determined, whichever lightener that you determined. This one in particular is really easy. We have, we could count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight foils down the top, which save us a tremendous amount of time from stuffing a bunch of foils and then get a very stripey look. So for someone that's looking for a nice lived in soft effect, this is great for them. We're gonna let her process now. Flash Silk has an up to 50 minute processing time. We're not gonna utilize any heat it's unnecessary for this, so we'll just check it in another 20 minutes and see if we got to the level of lightness that we're achievably after. Then she's gonna be shampooed and conditioned with Extreme. I choose to use Extreme after a uh, lightening service because it has the fortified benefits of protein in there to really go ahead and like lock in what we've just done. Then I'm going to glaze her on dry hair. Um, not sure exactly yet what my toner choice is going to be depending on the, uh, the undertones that I see in there. It could be a violet, it could be a blue, uh, it could be a pearl. It depends on what I'm after once we get up there. And then we're going to just uh, blow dry and finish her out. So stay tuned for the finish. Well, now we have the finished product. I allowed her to process. For the full 50-minute processing time, we did only use 20-volume peroxide, so I wasn't expecting to get a platinum effect at all. Um, and then because of those underlying pigments that were exposed, it was very golden, um, yellow-orange. So what I chose to do was tone her with Shade DQ Cloth 08N, which has a brown to blue violet tone to it, um, to one ounce of crystal clear. So then that diluted it up a little bit, and I added in about half an ounce of 09G to kind of give it this like golden, soft look that we see to it. Um, equal parts of processing solution. I processed it on dry hair for 20 minutes. Um, the benefit of using Shade DQ gloss, or cream for that matter, but as a toner, is that above anything else, it um, balances back down the pH to more of an acidic environment for us, really allowing the hair to be in its healthy environment. It helps to um, load the hair with shine because there's silicone in it for added wet combability, for shine factor, there are wheat amino acids, there's a ton of really amazing benefits to using Shades of Hue Gloss. Um, in this case, you can see how beautiful that that color turned out. This is the side, um, this is where her hair was parted. 
and then this is the side that it turned over to. And you really see that maximum amount of lightness that we've been able to put in there without it being super um, stripey down her center part. This is that side over here that we chose to do that pattern up the sides. And you can tell just how soft that that is, no matter how she chose to wear her hair. For her blowout, I used um, satin wear. That was the only thing I put in here. I used my Sanvia blow dryer, Sanvia brushes, and just some satin wear to give her this nice sleek finish. Um, overall, I think it turned out really good, and I hope that you know you learned how to do this technique and that you'll utilize it into the future. One thing I want to point out is the really soft root placement here because of that blur brush. We don't have any hard lines. Everything is just super soft blended really nicely. So hopefully you have enjoyed and that you've learned something. You can find all of my work on Facebook at Hair by Karina Graham. You can also find my work on Instagram, Hair by Karina Graham. And I hope to hear from you soon.